Okay, this is video 4 of the grade 11 chapter on Newton's laws and in this video we're going to apply Newton's second law to motion along an inclined plane. So here's a problem that you can try. Uh, we've got two blocks, a 4 kg that's hanging vertically and a 5 kg that's going to slide up the slope, up a rough slope, so there's friction on the slope between the box and the and the slope and the slope is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal and when we release the system the 5 kg accelerates up the slope so we know the direction of the acceleration and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the 5 kg and the slope is 0.2 so in the first question I want you to draw a free body diagram for each block so pause the video and attempt that question and come back for the answer. Okay, to answer question one, we needed to draw a free body diagram for each block. And uh, 4 kg is quite simple. The force is in the vertical plane. Obviously, the, the block has a weight that acts down and there's a tension in the cable acting up T and it's important that you draw because the system would be accelerating the 5 kg is accelerating up the slope this 4 kg would be falling down accelerating down so we need to draw the weight force bigger than the tension force in our diagrams they're not balanced the weight is bigger than the tension force creating that downward acceleration. For the 5 kg, we've got four forces acting on it. We've got its weight acting vertically down. We've got a normal force that's always perpendicular to the slope. We've got friction opposing its motion. And we've got the same tension force acting up the slope. So this tension force acting on the 4 kg is identical to the tension force acting on the 5 kg because that's the same string. So the tension throughout that string is constant. If I just go back to that diagram, let's make that point again, that the tension force acts towards the pulley here on the 5 kg, and the tension force, the same tension force, acts towards the pulley on the 4 kg. Okay, so hopefully you got those free body diagrams right. The next question I want you to do is question two. Find the frictional force, the force of kinetic friction on the 5 kg box. So the 5 kg box is sliding up the slope, so there's kinetic friction involved, and we know the coefficient of kinetic friction to be 0.2. So pause the video and try question number two. Right, let's look at the solution to that question. We were trying to find the force of kinetic friction on the 5 kg block. So it's important to realize that in order to find the force of kinetic friction, we need to know the normal force acting on the block. And the normal force is not equal to the weight. In fact, the normal force on an inclined plane is equal to the vertical component of the weight. So we need to find the vertical component of the weight because that has to balance with the normal force. The net force in the vertical plane here is zero, so Fn must be equal to Fgy. So for an inclined plane, when you draw one of these diagrams, you know that you need to put your 30 degrees here between the weight and the vertical component of the weight. And then from there, we can then find FGY and say it's equal to the normal force. So here's the equation for the frictional force, the force of kinetic friction. It's the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. And as I've just said, the normal force on an inclined plane is equal to FGY in this case. 
Well, if GY, if you apply trig to this triangle here, if GY would be the adjacent side, so we're going to have to use cos. So if GY would be FG, the hypotenuse, times cos of theta, in this case 30 degrees. So the vertical comp uh, component of the weight on an inclined plane is FG cos theta. So if we put our values in, FG is mg, theta is 30 degrees, and the frictional force, the coefficient, the force of kinetic friction comes out to be 8.49 newtons, and this acts down the slope. Let's go back to our question. This time, this is question 3 now. We want to find the acceleration of the system because the string doesn't stretch. The acceleration of the 5 kg up the slope should be exactly equal to the acceleration of the 4 kg as it accelerates downwards. So we want to find the acceleration of this system. So pause the video and have a go at trying to find the, the acceleration of the system. Okay, so now that you've attempted it, you would have isolated each block and applied Newton's second law to each block. So we need to be aware of directions here. So I said the 4 kg is accelerating down. So I'm going to choose down to be positive and then apply Newton's second law. So The force is acting on the 4 kg with the gravitational force downwards and that's in the positive direction minus the tension up. We had the gravitational force down larger than the tension up on the 4 kg. So taking down to be positive the net force is going to be Fg minus T and that's equal to MA and if we start to substitute what we have in there the weight of the 4 kg is its mass times g we don't know t and the mass in question here that we're dealing with is 4 kgs so if we rearrange this expression we get an expression for t in terms of a there are two unknowns here so we'll need a second equation to to solve for those two unknowns so that's why we isolate the 5 kg now. And here, up the slope for me is positive. So when I apply Newton's second law, I need to say that the tension up the slope minus the component of the weight down the slope minus friction would give me my net force. Let's just go back to a diagram on that. Here we've got on the 5 kg, we've got the tension up the slope, we've got the frictional force opposing its motion, and we can't forget to put the horizontal component of the weight into our expression for the net force. So FGX would be FG times sine of theta. And if you remember, sine acts down the slope. So the horizontal component of the weight, the horizontal component of the weight depends on sine of theta. And if you look at that right angle triangle there, you will see that the opposite side to the 30 degrees is FGX. So we have to use sine for the component down the slope, FGX, 
is fg sine theta. So if we go back to our calculation, we said the net force was T up the slope minus FGX down the slope minus the frictional force down the slope, and that's equal to MA. And then we start to substitute. So FG is MG, theta is 30 degrees. We've got the frictional force from our previous question. We calculated the frictional force between the 5 kg and the surface. I've calculated the component of, of the weight down the slope to be 24.5 and the mass in question is 5. So if we solve for T, we get that expression. Now we have two expressions for the tension force and the tension force is the same on each block. So when we equate those two we can get rid of T and we can solve for the acceleration of the block and it comes out to be 0.69 meters per second squared and it, the acceleration is directed up the slope. Okay let's do a fourth question on that. So in question four, we need to find the tension in the string. So pause the video and attempt to find the tension in that string. Okay, so now that you've tried it, I hope you got 36.44 Newtons up the slope. How did we do that? Well, we had two expressions for the tension for each block. And we can use any of these two to find the tension in the string. All we had to do was substitute the acceleration in for A in each case. And we find that we get the same result. That the tension in the string is 36.44 Newtons and it's directed up the slope on the 5 kg. And on the 4 kg, it would be directed upwards.